up everybody and welcome to the third TSC competition. We're giving out $500 tonight. And yeah, this is a pre-recorded show and you can tell that because how else would I get through this script? Before we get into things, let's have a little bit of fun everybody. Let's say that if 100 people come on this event right now, 100 people at one time, TSC will make the prize money for next competition one thousand dollars that's right first place will get one thousand dollars if we see a hundred people on this event right now so text a bud get your mom to go on her ipad steal your kid's ipad i don't know just jump on this stream if you are a creator if you're going to be in the competition for next spring this is your chance to up the ante for the pool. That's a good chunk of cash for a sketch. So I encourage everybody to get a sketch in for April. Let's battle it out on the channel and let's leave it all out there and let the judges decide. Speaking of judges, every competition we try to bring in some Toronto-based legends that have been doing sketch comedy for a long time or that you've seen on the screen and we're very excited to have everybody involved for the winter competition. Your judges that have decided who walks away with the $500 are as follows. Mark Little, Tim Blair, Alana Rioch, Gulid Abdi, and Aurora Brown, you're gonna hear from later. Also, as is tradition, we have last competition's winner, Cheap Wine, and they're gonna crown the winner of this competition and give away that $500. And we wanna thank all the participants. We wanna thank you if you just checked out the sketches or if you voted or subscribed to the channel. And yeah, you bet your ass I'm stalling right now because we need to see a hundred people on this event. Have you asked anyone? Have you called anyone at this point? Ah, no one's coming. So let's check out some highlights from 10th place to 5th. Hey, I'm Tommy Marshall. Hello, my name is Michael Harrison. Ned Fridman. Came up with a sketch the way I think most great sketches are uh, created. I was thinking about serial killers. Um, specifically that serial killer in the GTA who previously was a mall Santa. The first conversation I had on American soil, uh, the cab driver immediately, like literally before we had left the airport and, and had gotten onto the highway, uh, started talking to me about how vaccines were turning people into cryptocurrency and uh, studied nanobots that take the data of your tracking information. He wished he was Amish. Literally a lot of the funniest lines in this sketch are me just remembering things that he said to me. The whole idea of Mean Jenga is, I just wanna make fun of how stupid this game is, right? Come on now. This is the only game I've ever seen where only one person loses and no one wins. And I can't believe no one's talking about this. So first I had this idea about a sketch where a guy would be half man, half horse. So I rushed down to Evan to see if that was a great idea and it'd be awesome for him to edit it. And then he said that it would be like super easy for him to do that. And there would be any problems at all. <laughs> because a good mall Santa is somebody who's like joyous and happy and jolly. But really, probably what they mostly care about is that he's not a pedophile or a serial killer. No real issue. I mean, people thought that I was doing a Batman thing for the most part. Like in one of the clips, the guy just going, yeah, Batman, go Batman. And I'm very clearly in Matrix garb, not Batman garb. So that rattled me a bit. Batman. I wanted to lead into like a Requiem of a Dream kind of ending where the character is just crying and his life's destroyed because the only thing this game's proves is who the worst is. The one thing that was kind of tricky was the last scene, uh, eating the hot dog. Um, one, cause we filmed it in like a common space in our building and we, for some reason, only brought one hot dog down with us. We kind of had to nail it. And then um, even if we had like a full pack, I wouldn't want to be sitting there eating raw hot dogs all night. Mitch carrying around that bag of baby carrots. The original idea, we kind of had him saying, what a freak, inviting the carrot. Uh, went until about halfway through, we decided that maybe he'd do it with a hot dog. So he probably went through, I don't know, 10 carrots in the matter of the sketch, and then another, I don't know, 20 just because he was hungry, so. Layering on, like at one point, I think there was like three or four Tommies on, on screen, and that gave my computer genuinely a lot of uh, trouble. Deciding how to do the hooves. Okay, so I was thinking we do the hooves straight down, 
so that I'm more human. No, I already told you top. that we have to do the hooves like this because I have to cut your bottom half off. If you do the, the hooves this way, I'm going to cut your arms off. No, but you're, you're not. That's No, I, I am felt. listening to you. I just, you say the same thing over and over again, and I feel like I have to explain this all the time, and it's just really frustrating for me. We're going to do it my way, because it's the only way that it works, okay? But well, we're not going to do it at all, okay? Prosthetic hooves? What the f- uh, No criminal activity. <laughs> I'm just a normal guy looking for a job. Boner? What? No boner. Well, maybe 25%. Well, Randy actually had a boner when I was sitting on his lap. Right, yeah. Is that wa a wacky tidbit? I didn't see that coming. That was... Mm. <laughs> He's a method actor. Yeah, really commits. No, take it back. You gotta smile. Dude, that's way too much. Take it back. Hey, I'm Peter from TSC. I got the boring part. I gotta ask you for money, so I thought I'd jazz it up a little bit. Action. Why not make a donation to the TSC competition? The money goes back into the prize pool. So if you win the show, your friends will think you're cool. A few of you asked how you could help, so we've decided to start taking donations via the link tree in the description below. Those donations actually all go right back into the competition, as you heard from my dope lyricism just a couple seconds ago. Competition. And that is in addition to the $1,000 if this stream gets to 100 views. So don't forget that. We are still live for that offer. We do want to get this to 100. Let's do it. Is that 100 yet? We don't know. It's pre-recorded. We're probably sitting there anxious to see if it's going to get to 100 because that means we're going to have to figure out a way to match these monies. <laughs> so what we're going to... So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna play again to get more people on the stream. <laughs> Just joking. Let's check out the top four. Hey guys, my name is Jordan Shore and I'm the writer and creator of Design Deadline. All right, all right, all right. Settle down, all right? We still don't know what it's gonna look like. I would say the biggest hurdle was definitely just assembling the entire cast, making sure everyone was available, no one was sick with COVID, trying to get the space set as well, just because we really needed to make sure we had that kind of authentic office space for the sketch to work. So I would say that was probably the biggest challenge of putting a sketch this size together. Well, I was just trying to- Are you still talking? What if it was 3D? What if it was 3D, idiot? If I had to pick one shot that was the most technically difficult, I'd say it was also my favorite shot of the sketch. Um, and this is when our lovely intern, played by Rami, is exiting the room after pitching this idea and everyone else on the team just kind of shits on him. And so he's leaving to go get one of the employees coffee. And then just as he's about to leave the room, you pan out and see me giving that same idea and the entire team just loses it and goes nuts. And then you see Rami, the intern, and just kind of crumble and cry and exit. So just the kind of timing of the shot and the panning was definitely a bit of a challenge, but it definitely paid off and was for sure my favorite of the sketch. Okay, I got it, I got it. What if it's 3D? Oh, yes! Yes! kind of hard to pinpoint just one funny behind the scenes moment. I would say getting all of us into the room with all these like wacky, kooky, crazy, random office props that my lovely friend Emma, who is in the sketch, provided. Just kind of playing with those, throwing paper at each other, squeezing oranges, just kind of like being ridiculous. I'd say one good moment stand out was when Curtis, who is one of the employees, is kind of playing with this very phallic looking rubber doll and just kind of like flinging it around and like tossing it on his face. It was definitely the most uh, laugh out loud moment of the behind the scenes for sure. Yeah, just in general, the sketch was super uh, interesting and fun for me to do. I've never written a sketch with so many people. Okay. Yeah, like, so I think what was interesting was kind of writing all of the lines and kind of doing read throughs as we went. And then when certain lines resonated with people or sounded better in their voice, they could kind of volunteer to say that line. So it was kind of an interesting way to put it together, not necessarily having it set in stone who was gonna say what, but just kind of getting everyone in the room, having the general idea of the lines and then letting everybody kind of take shots at them and see what felt best with the individuals. 
punchy, something that says I'm hip, I'm modern, but I'm approachable. Yes. Yes, yes something that speaks to our demographic. Yes. yes. My friend uh, Monica and I were just kind of shooting the shit at a restaurant over a couple breakfast sandwiches, kind of just coming up with some fun sketch ideas. And we both always wondered how ridiculous it would be to be in this marketing meeting where everyone is so passionate about what the project is, but the project ends up being something that's so minuscule and stupid and kind of having that build up and then that release at the very end to reveal what they were actually working on. Feast your eyes. Oh, I'll never guess what happened. Mary, you son of a bitch! Oh, Disclaimer, please don't send me dick pics. I don't want them. Most, most people, I would say, don't want them. Maybe ask before. Yeah. This Christmas, these are the five guys you wouldn't want to meet, but you've dated them all. Hi, I'm Chrissy, and I wrote and narrated The X-Men. It's The X-Men. I came up with a premise for The X-Men from unfortunate personal experience, but I love to make it fun and make it funny and process my trauma like that. Let's go. I was also finding that I, when friends and I would talk about our dating experiences with straight men, we were finding a lot of similar patterns of behavior. So I wanted to exaggerate it and make it fun. And so I turned them into superheroes, as one does. I give you all my attention in the bedroom. Half liar, half loser equals full-time exhausting with this guy. One of the technically hardest shots was definitely the whole lineup and us walking forward. We um, we had to find some place where we could see the CN Tower in the background. So Pete and Tay said to follow them, they knew a spot. And we went through these alleyways onto this uh, rock covered back parking lot where there was somebody clearly living in a van and um, we just implicitly trusted them. But uh, for a while there, I definitely thought that they were gonna be killing us. A lot of effort went into making costumes for Taylor's dick pics. Um, Taylor and Marlene were cutting and gluing together little costumes instead of costumes uh, so that we could use them in the shot. So like the little crown and the little bow tie. You know, and sometimes I just, I imagine receiving a dick pic where someone has a little construction paper monocle, uh, you know? on there, make it creative, make it fun. Why are we, why are we limiting ourselves, you know? You can expect different angles, lighting, and levels of softness whenever this guy's horny, which is all the time. I would say some of the most fun shots to get were one, uh, Amin's shot where he's texting and then Peter's hands come up from underneath. My hands just split into like four hands. Um, I think originally in the script, it was just that, my phone split into two, but while we're on set, someone was like, oh, wouldn't it be really funny if like his hands also split up? And we're like, that's stupid, let's do it. And every time we filmed it, they kept telling me go more extra and extra, like with the spazzing and stuff, um, which was just really funny and fun time filming that scene. You got several phones and is always texting, but you'll never know who. Hot tip, make Neglecto your exo ASAP. The part at the end where Kevin's J name character comes out and he's like, "You, I'm part of the X-Men solely because my name starts with a J. I thought that was really funny because we didn't want to reveal a specific name and just keep it like generic J names. Wait, I'm here because my name starts with a J? I'm a fuck boy solely because my name is J. The X-Men. The shawarma shop was my favorite part of the X-Men shoot because we like walked in and then we were like, hey, can we have $80 of shawarma? And also can we turn your restaurant into a film set? Uh, this shot was really fun to get because uh, it was all improvised. So there is audio for that clip. It's just a really funny conversation, but unfortunately the audio did not pan out for that one. For the boys. So Pete comes in and he narrates over top of that last clip, which is awesome. It's hilarious. Great narrating. Thank you, Peter. Ah, uh, the X-Men in their natural habitat. 
I hope you enjoyed the sketch and sorry if it's relatable. Hello, Toronto Sketch Comedy Sketch Competition. My name is Rora Brown and I'm one of the judges on this competition. And I have been part of the sketch community in Toronto since, I guess, 1998 when I started taking, no, even before that, actually. I think I'm, I've been doing it longer than some of the people in this competition have been alive, which is a bit scary. But uh, anyway, I was very pleased to judge this competition. I enjoyed many, many moments. Uh, one of my favorites was Spider-Man giving online therapy. Sharing your life with others is what makes life beautiful. Thanks a lot, Spider-Man. Uh, you're my hero. But they all made me laugh and uh, I wish the best of luck to everybody. But for now, I'm going to throw to your second place winner. Hi, I'm Alex Handy from the sketch Haunted Roommates, uh, which I made with my real life roommate, Kyle Patton. Um, Kyle, unfortunately, is not home right now. Not actually sure where he is. Uh, he's been missing for several days. Starting to get concerned, but I'm sure it's fine. Remember when I told you, like, I was joking this place is haunted when you moved in? I think I have proof. Check this out. What is up, guys? This is video diary number a million. I cannot keep track. Um, a little update in my life. My new roommate Kyle moved in this week, and this guy fucking sucks. Anyways, the sketch. Um, basically, the idea for the sketch um, just came about because Kyle and I and our other roommates uh, would watch a lot of ghost videos in the pandemic, like on YouTube, um, just like ghost sightings. And then I think in one of them, there was like two girls doing a TikTok dance and then like a ghost shows up in the background. Uh, and that just gave me the idea for a sketch um, where someone was like doing something very embarrassing on video and then accidentally captures evidence of a ghost. Uh, and then has to like show everyone this embarrassing video. And then working through that idea, it eventually just turned into uh, what it now is. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. The do yeah, the door moved. Whoa, the door. What? I would say the hardest part about making the sketch, it's probably just like getting the ghost aspects of it to seem real and like believable. Just like the door closing by itself and like the ball falling down the stairs. Just getting those to come across in a way that seems real and was also like obvious enough when you're watching the video. Cause it's like, I don't know, you don't want it to be like too subtle and then like no one even notices it. And then I would say my favorite part or like the funniest part I think of the video is just watching like Kyle's character uh, react to like this video where he's getting insulted uh, so badly and watching this processing it and then trying to pretend like he's not even noticing that aspect of the video and just kind of like smiles his way through it. Uh, I don't know. To me, that's very funny. I don't know if this guy's the dumbest person I've ever met, but he's certainly the ugliest. Ooh, yeah, that was me. Anyway, it's pretty freaky, huh? You should maybe move out. Totally, I'm gone. And then, I don't know, that's basically all there is to say about it. Not a ton of, like, fun behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, really, we're all, we're not really fun people. We're very serious. Um, we don't really get along. We have a lot of creative uh, and personal differences, a lot of je jealousy and resentment. Um, so really not a fun shoot, um, but hopefully a fun video. And thank you so much. Uh, and yeah. Um, I was gonna. Oh. I, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, ever hey, uh. <laughs>
Hey you guys, we're Cheap Wine. <laughs> Welcome to our channel. Hey you guys, we're Cheap Wine. Hey you Hey you guys, we're Cheap Wine. Maybe you recognize us from our YouTube channel. Or maybe from our cute, lighthearted sketches where we're always super kind to each other. Fucking bitch. Oh, oh. oh thank God. And next month, you can catch us at Tio Sketch Fest. But for now, we are so excited to announce the winners of the Toronto Sketch Comedy Winter Competition. This round was so strong. There were so many amazing videos, hilarious films. And uh, without further ado, we will announce the Ooh. winner. Jack actually does not know, so it will be a live reveal. Dun, 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 dun. just a blue piece of paper. It's a boy. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> Is this a gender reveal? No, we just Are you are you pregnant? It's just written on a blue Am piece I? of paper, I think. We just Oh. We just blue construction paper. Oh. Buys houses by Kyle Wolven. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Kyle! Yeah. A huge thank you to the TSC team for putting this competition together and for having us on to judge this round. Um, it's so great of you guys to do this and to give all of us an opportunity to put our work out into the world. Yeah, an amazing work uh, from all the contestants. It was a pleasure to watch. Yes, it was an amazing show. Cheers! Cheers. Hi, I'm Kyle Wolven, and I'm the creator of the Buys Houses video. Stephanie Buys Houses, you can trust her. Stephanie Buys Houses, she's looking out for you. Stephanie, who is she? Where she get the money? Um, I'm in bed because my kids are in bed, and I just I kind of want to keep them in in bed too. But you gotta sell quick, there's no time to avoid it You need to find a new space for your toilets I got the idea for this sketch because I kept seeing signs around the city Like we buy houses and kept getting letters in the mail saying I'll buy my house for cash And I just thought like that's a lot of cash So how do you get all that money and who are you? <laughs> So you wanna buy a house, but you don't stand a chance. Uh, the hurdles, getting it done. I have three kids under five, and I'm going living through a pandemic with them. So it's hard to do anything, I guess. Plus my wife's the one who actually films it for me, and she doesn't like that. The city's in the midst of a housing crisis, cause outside in hardest shot to do was me sitting in my kid's jeep and trying to drive it because I have abnormally long legs that don't fit in those jeeps so it was pretty hard to do that plus being out in public while driving that my wife didn't like filming it Alex buys houses He's so thoughtful I can't believe he took the time to hand write a note to me and 50,000 other people Favorite part was uh, the line Megan buys houses Megan buying houses Is it Megan? Or is it Megan? That was my wife came up with that line Megan buys houses No it's probably Megan Basically my wife's the funny one Megan or Megan wants to buy your house My favorite behind the scenes moment was actually looking up some of these companies like the Megan Buys Houses and who the people are and when you research these companies they actually seem even more sketchy the more you find out about them. Amar buys houses, cash, 
Mary Jade, Andrea, Angela, Rebecca, and Jamie, but it houses so many people. Um. No. Kyle buys houses. I'm a comedian. Never mind, Kyle is poor. That's more like it. That's the show, guys. Thank you so, so much for checking it out and being a part of it. We want to thank all the participants. We want to especially thank our judges for being involved. And we want to thank everybody who subscribed to the channel and likes the Instagram page and keeps this thing running. It's amazing to see it continue to grow, and we want to keep it running as long as you guys want to keep it running. Next competition starts right now. You can check out the website for details or the link tree below, and we'll see you in April.